Hi guys, Anastasia here with Art Working Muse, and today I'm with Kansas City artist Ashley Corbello. Hi Ashley, thanks for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, Ashley, I wanted to talk about your work today and talk about some art fair stuff um, because that's something a lot of artists have some interest in. But first off, tell me what kind of art you do. What, what's so your I'm medium? A, what do you do? I'm an acrylic painter. I paint mostly pets, but animals of all kinds. Uh, I do commission work as the bulk of my work. So dogs, cats, horses, cows, whatever. Any animal is mostly primarily what I do. Awesome. And where can they find your artwork if they want to see it? AshleyCorbello.com or on Facebook and Instagram, just Ashley Corbello. Awesome. And I'll put those links at the bottom of this video um, for those who are watching. So tell me, you're, so you do primarily like pets and animals. What is your motivation behind that? So the short answer is I love dogs. I have dogs. I have two dogs and two cats. Um, I foster dogs. We have a foster currently uh, through Midwest Animal Rescue here in town. Uh, so I just have a huge passion for them. It's kind of like I like where I connect. You know, I connect more to animals than people sometimes. And uh, growing up, I grew up on a farm in Louisiana. Uh, we had 60 acres, so we had horses and cows, and the neighbors had chickens and cats and dogs, you name it. I could ride a horse before I could walk. So it's just kind of in my DNA almost at this point. You know, it's just a natural extension of my upbringing. Right. And you can tell from looking at your paintings how much you love animals. I mean, um, I love watching your Facebook because you're always posting your little rescues. And I'm like, how amazing. If I had more time on my hands, that's something I would absolutely love to do. So um, I have a kid as well. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little bit of a mess trying to bring that in. But um, I wanted to talk about art fairs because I, I've seen some of your talks on Facebook about art fairs. And I know that you do quite a few a year. I've done some and I really connected with what you were saying. So how much of your income would you say that you make from art fairs every year? So I do about nine art fairs a year. Um, and I would say somewhere between 50 and 60% of my income is from art fairs. So it's hard for me to gauge an exact number because I also get commission work from it. Because a lot of times if somebody's going to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a painting of a dog they want it to be their dog right um so it's unusual that they buy a big one like right off the wall unless i just get lucky and it happens to look like their dog uh so if we're talking like dollars on the ground sales wise it's about 50 percent, and then i'd say maybe another 10 percent commission work you know somewhere in there Okay. And, and commissions are a big part of art fairs, um, th which kind of leads me to the next question. What are some of the positives you would say goes with art fairs? Because a lot of us, we sell online, we do art shows, we do art fairs, and, and we do that sort of thing. What are some of the positives you would say come with being in an art fair? I would say similar to gallery work, you get to meet people that like your, like your work. You get to talk with them about it. And for me, like people that get really excited also want to like show me the pictures of their dog on their phone, which I love, tell me stories about their dog, or, you know, occasionally they break down in tears talking about a dog that passed, you know, so it's just nice to share that bond with people, you know, with the general public and it's people I probably would have never met otherwise. They may or may not have come across me on Facebook, but you know, it's hard to know. It's, and it's gotten to the point too, where I've met people at art fairs and they follow me on Facebook and then they'll come ask me like, if I have a foster at the next time I'm in their town or, you know, what's going on with this or, so it's kind of cool to build that relationship. Sure. Um, and then another big positive is meeting other artists and there are art fair artists that have done this for 30 years and their knowledge is amazing and they're happy to share with you and give you tips and, you know, teach you how to weight your tent properly or little tidbits here of how to interact with people. So that's another huge boon to doing art fairs, just talking with other artists and learning from them. Right. I love that. I think selling art has so much to do with relationships and what a great place to build those relationships. Like you said, they want to share those stories and really connect with you and your work. Yeah. But um, I like that you mentioned the other artists as well, because I've met some amazing artists and became friends with them over the years because people who do art fairs tend to be very open and very friendly. And we're kind of all in this together, just trying to, you know, we're not really competing. We're all sitting right next to each other. Um, and our work's going to speak differently to everybody. So yeah. I love that you share that. Yeah. Tell yeah. And me. the other thing with art too, is that. Oh, really no, you treated like a business. 
and it has to be marketed as such. And so I think meeting other artists helps you learn that they help start to teach you that. Um, and so, and then like another thing that happened is one year at Westport before I was in it, we walked the show and I met Kent Davis who did lighted sculptures. And since then we just chatted with him about his work, but we've become friends. And then through him, I met Andrew Batchelor, who's an artist from Joplin. Um, and so we've be, I've become friends with him. And then a couple of years ago, I did the Joplin art fair and he saw my name on the list of artists called Kent to get my phone number and then called me to offer me to stay in his studio for free for the weekend. Wow. Yeah, that's so amazing. those relationships can also benefit you in more ways than just friendship, you know? So I was like, that's amazing, you know? So we crashed in a studio and saved some money and had a great time. That's really cool. I, lo- I love those stories. Um, tell me, there, there are a lot of positives, but they can be a lot of work. Tell me some of the negatives for artists who are thinking about getting into art fairs and doing it. Because if they're like, oh my God, I can make so much money from them. Tell me some of the negatives that come along with that. Right. So they are a ton of work, a huge amount of work. So you are responsible for your tent, your setup, whatever display is inside your tent, bringing your work, you have to set it up. So that's all you, the manual labor. You pay huge fees, several hundred dollars in booth fees, and that just gets you that spot on the concrete, plus travel if you've traveled out of town. So there's that. They're very expensive, and then you're basically risking that. You're risking... You know, if you, if I traveled out of town, I'm risking a minimum of a thousand dollars to hope I sell anything like five dollars, period. Um, and then because we're outside, which this is something I wonder all the time about art fairs, like we take this artwork that takes a ton of time and costs a lot of money, and then we put it outside in the elements. So you're battling Mother Nature. So rainstorms, windstorms, people's tents blowing into your tent, your art blowing away. Um, I did an art fair in Aspen. And there were wildfires in the mountains and then it rained during the show and then it hailed and then it was sunny. It was like the full gamut of weather while we were there. That's an so artist nightmare. I know I was doing a show and the winds picked up and a glass artist didn't have things weighted down quite right. And the wind caught their tent and flipped it mm-hmm. and instantly their entire inventory was wiped out. Yeah. And I just cried for him. I was like, oh, my God, I can't even imagine. So, yeah, that's that's a huge one. And ceramicists, like, can you imagine that blowing in the wind? You know, like, painting sometimes can survive. I've had a few get punctured. But, like, ceramics and glass, you're right. just toast. Right. There's, um, I'm glad you bring those things up. And then one thing I heard you talking about um, on your, on your, um, Facebook talk that I thought was really interesting. They are pricey and the upfront costs, booth fees and application fees and things like that. How has that affected you right now with this virus going on? Because the world is shut down and most of the art fairs have been canceled, which is a huge hit to your income. But what about all those upfront fees that you paid in? So the jury fees we lost pretty much. Um, I just got another cancellation yesterday from one at the end of June. And so um, among the art fair community, there's basically been huge talks about this because, you know, many artists do 25 or 30 shows a year and it's 100% of their income. So they are really struggling. But what it's done is it's weeding out the bad show promoters, the ones that are just in it for the dollars and don't care about the artists. So some our art fairs like Omaha is one that I do every year and I love it. I do really well. They refunded our 100% booth fee. I just got the check in the mail this week. Uh, there's another one in St. Louis that I applied to for the first time. It's at the end of September and they've already decided to cancel because they didn't feel like they could do it justice to the community. Wow. And they refunded our jury fee and that is much more rare. So for the most part, you're just lighting your jury fees on fire. Right. You know, and many of us apply to everything in January or February I had applied to not quite everything, but the ones I knew I wanted to do, like Westport, you know, some of those in the fall, the one in St. Louis, I went ahead and applied for, so I didn't miss the deadline. So we just lost that money. It's just gone. And some shows, so there's another one I got accepted to in Denver that's not till the end of July. And they're saying they think it will still happen. And quote unquote, if the state cancels it, they will refund as much of our booth fee as possible. What does that even mean? Are you going to give me $5? Or are you going to give me $500? Like, you know, so a lot of artists are just kind of backing out for the year. Oh, no, I think you paused. Because 
you're talking thousands of dollars that you're potentially losing. So there? Yeah, yeah, you cut out for a second. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you froze here too, so. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so you're talking about losing thousands of dollars if these promoters don't want to give you your money back. And one of them actually sent an email. I didn't apply to it, but I saw a story from another artist in Florida where they, the artist asked for a refund, and they said they would refund their money, but they would never invite them to the show again. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, That's so it's definitely insane. teaching us, like, whose shows we want to invest in and whose we don't. Who right. are, who's in it for the cash and who's in it for the artists? Tell me, for somebody who doesn't know anything about art fairs and they're wanting or considering starting to show, where would they find those? Like, so where the would easiest, they? The easiest place is a website called zapplication.org. Okay. And the vast majority of art fairs run their applications through that site. And even if you're just a patron and you're like, hmm, I wonder what they paid to be in my local show, you can go in there, you can type in the name of your show, and you can see, like, they list the jury fee and the booth fees, and they it's all right out there. It's public information. So if you're interested, you can go find it. That's the main one. Um, so some shows, there are a few shows that do entry thingy. They're less common, and then even fewer that still run through their own dedicated websites. But if you're new and you're just looking for an easy place to find its application is a good place to start. Right. And I would say the best ones I find out about was when I started doing them. And then you talk to the other artists and they'll say, well, I did really well at this one. And I mean, there's one show I love doing that. They have so many volunteers that are bringing us water, running to get food for us. They're actually watching our booth while we have bathroom breaks. And then I've had shows who don't do anything. And they're like, you need to stay at your booth all the time. And you're like, but I'm going to wet myself. <laughs> like yeah. you, you really, so it's nice to talk to the other artists and get a feel for what different shows are like, because they're not all created the same no, at all. So. Not even remotely. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me. Tell me the last question I want to ask you, what advice would you give to other artists out there starting out or just trying to make a living, follow their passion? What kind of advice would you give? So my first thing would be to make sure that you love it. Like you are 100% dedicated because it's a very hard path. Entrepreneurship in general is not easy, but our art is personal to us. So not everyone is going to love it. Not everyone is going to say nice things. You're going to try to sell things and make zero dollars for a long time probably. So just make sure that you are 100%. Like if you don't sell your art, you're still going to make it. You just got to be dedicated. Um, and then the other thing I would say is I had a mentor, uh, Greg Manchester, he's an illustrator, and he said, basically, his best advice was don't give up. But 98% of art school artists give up. They go pursue another career. They just stop trying. So essentially, if you're in that 2% that doesn't give up, you will make it eventually. So just right. don't give up. Whether you have to work a part-time job to keep yourself afloat for a few years or full-time or whatever, just keep at it. Great. That's excellent advice. I mean, that's like the best advice I think you could give to anybody. So yeah. if anybody's interested in checking out Ashley's work, ashleycorbello.com. Again, I'll put those links up. Thank you so much, Ashley, for meeting with me today. And um, I wish you much success. And hopefully some of your shows for later in the fall take off. Um, I was leery. I actually had a wedding planned um, in May. So I didn't apply for any of those shows. And this is the first time ever. And I was really upset that I couldn't apply for those shows because I was like, oh, and I, I booked the wedding not thinking it through. And they've gotten canceled. So it worked out in my favor for the first time ever. But um, hopefully you have great success at your shows in the fall. And I'm sure they can see if somebody's interested in seeing where you're going to be. Those are up on your website. They are. Yeah. Awesome. There's only one right now, but they're there. <laughs> so you guys can go see her in person. Thanks, yeah. Ashley. And yeah, um, we will talk to you soon. Have a great Bye. day. Bye.